Art and Design at Hunters Bar Infant School. This is a presentation by Louise Hadfield. I'm a teacher in Year 1 Foxes and I have the privilege of being the Art and Design Lead at Hunters Bar Infant School. And I'd like to start with a quote. The artist is not a special kind of person, rather each person is a special kind of artist. That includes each and every one of us here. Art at Hunters Bar Infant School is inspiring, rigorous and practical. That means the children have lots of opportunities to develop their craft, develop their skills, use their imaginations to create and also draw on all kinds of inspirations from the works of other artists to the children in their own class to experiences. They develop an appreciation of different types of art and how art is used in a wide variety of contexts, both within our school and within the world. We teach children how to use a variety of media and mater materials, so just within drawing the children will experience using sketching pencils, pastels, oil pastels, pens, crayons, and they'll be able to choose the media that's right for the purpose. We teach children the necessary knowledge and skills to be able to evaluate and discuss the art they see and experience. We don't just talk about what we like, what we dislike, we talk about what's interesting. We talk about the value of the art, how it might have been created, what it means to us. We li make links to the wider curriculum, including maths, science, computing and DT. The children will often use computer programs to create art, to access work by other artists. They'll explore pattern in maths. They'll explore um, pattern in science and nature and also using resources that they find um, to create art, such as leaf prints, looking at the patterns of veins. We allow all children to have opportunities to display artwork in an exhibition or an event. We encourage children to collaborate towards an end goal, working together. And by creating and experiencing an art, art, children develop confidence and resilience. They keep going, they persist. If they find a problem, they'll find a solution to that. And we really focus on developing a growth mindset. This means that children don't perceive that you're either good at art or bad at art, that you're naturally talented or not. They know that each and every one of us improves as we practice and that everyone is an artist. Each art lesson, indeed every lesson at Hunter's Bar, starts with a do now and that's a hook, a way into the learning and it will often recap some learning from a previous lesson or even from a pre previous unit of work. So here are just a few examples. So here we invite the children to name a famous artist and tell their partners something interesting about them. Now these examples here are artists which the children have already explored and learned about. So everyone has the opportunity to both recap knowledge that they've learned and also start from a place of confidence, something that will then lead into the future learning. Here are some more examples looking at drawing techniques. So we've got um, shading, hatching, cross-hatching, blending. Again, these are all techniques which the children have been introduced to and we'll recap those over time. So perhaps if you've not done a drawing unit for a while, the children might forget the names of some of those and so it's a way of keeping that knowledge firmly embedded in their minds so that they can access it quickly and easily. And again, um, thinking about the knowledge of things like secondary colours, tertiary colours, coming back to that even if it's a skill that they haven't practiced for a little while to make sure that it's it's readily available to them. So here are some examples of the artwork um, that you might see from children during their reception year at Hunters Bar Infant School. So lots of the different types of art here that you see, printing, collage, sculpture, um, drawing, are the genres which will follow the children right the way through school. 
the different ways of creating art. I've also included some examples of art inspired by a famous piece of art. So we'll look at some key artists in each year at school. Um, here the children have explored work by Vasily Kandinsky and his, here are his concentric circles and the children use that as a stimulus for their own artwork. So some of them used painting techniques, some of them used printing and they all explored creating shapes um, and patterns and pictures using circles. Below you can see artwork inspired by literature. So this is a, a book which is absolutely beautiful. If you've not re read it, I heartily recommend it. It's called The Dot. And the character that you can see there on the wall is Vashti. And she initially starts the book believing that she can't draw. And she gets really frustrated if things go wrong. She screws up the paper. She doesn't want to make a mark. And then one day, she makes a dot. And from that, all of these beautiful pieces of art are produced. She creates squiggles from the dot, she creates concentric circles, she creates beautiful pieces of art that lots of people come to love and enjoy. And here the children have been inspired by that and have created their own dot pieces of art, their own masterpieces. You can see the children have explored printing, using stencils, using shapes and patterns that they find in the environment, using collage techniques, so sticking and cutting different materials, fabrics, um, lots of different um, things that they found to create patterns, geometric shapes, realistic interpretations sometimes. The children also explore paper sculpture, so ways in which they can fold, bend, twist, curl, manipulate paper so that it isn't just a 2D um, sheet, instead it becomes a 3D piece of art. You can also see some paintings based on the children's own interests. Here we've got some emperor penguins, including a gorgeous chick. Um, and you can see that the child here has really started to look at um, different ways of representing things as well. We've even got the animals in profile here. When we explore clay, which the children get to explore in every year, um, we explore how we can manipulate it in different ways. So here you can see some of the tools the children have used, like the rolling pins, cutters, um, the shaping tools. When we explore paint, we are developing the children's skills continually. So sometimes they'll just, the children will just have free reign and they can paint whatever they choose. Sometimes we'll be teaching them a specific technique. So here you can see that the children are learning how to mix powder paints and they've had to practice adding the right amount of water, creating the right consistency, using pipettes to be precise in terms of how much water they're adding. Um, adding different amounts of um, pigment, so sometimes starting only with blue, sometimes adding a little bit of black to create shades, sometimes adding white to create different tones and tints. And you can also see paintings from observations, so these, the tree that you can see there took place outside, and we've also got drawings um, that the children have done based on things that they could see on, on a visit to the park, that's beautiful dog. <laughs> and here are some examples of self-directed independent learning in art so this is where the children have taken an idea or a skill or a theme which they've learned about and have really made it their own and used and applied those skills to create pieces independently here are some examples of artwork from year one so as you can see lots of the same techniques are being explored um, there you can see the colour mixing where we've, um, the children have explored adding different amounts of black to blue to create shades and giving names to those paints and thinking about what kind of effect that will have in their painting. In the drawing you can see a range of different techniques have been used there such as shading, hatching, cross hatching um, and the child's really used their own imagination to create a creature, a new creature of their own. With the paintings the paintings were um, based on self-portraits, they're the children's paintings of observations of themselves, but they've also been inspired by the work of the artist Frida Kahlo, and so they looked at the things that they were interested in and how they could make their paintings look just like them, a representation of the things that were important to them in the way that Frida's artwork did. So as you can see the Sheffield Wednesday colours on the painting on the left, you can see all of the nature that has inspired the painting in the middle, 
and you can see the child's favourite colours and her dancing outfit and the painting on the right. Again, you can see the use of clay during year one and the fact that children are now learning skills to develop um, their joining techniques. So they'll be looking at how to use slip to attach pieces of clay to make sure it doesn't fall together. And again, you can see the examples of printing and collage and how we move on as we develop those skills. Here are some examples of artwork from year two. So the drawings here are using oil pastels and pen and they're inspired by the artwork of James Mabuthia, a Kenyan artist um, linked to the children's theme on Kenya. The children again have drawn inspiration from their own interests, their own favourite colours, how they would represent themselves um, in abstract form rather than a realistic portrait. We've explored sculpture in different ways in year two, so the children have created paper sculptures. Um, here's an example created in Art Club where the children use paper mache. Um, all the children in class have created um, flower sculptures, um, looking at how to join um, how to join different materials together to create beautiful pieces of art. We've got printing techniques here where the children developed their own printing tools um, and made their own printing blocks to create their own um, necklaces based on those worn by the Maasai tribe. And here there's a painting based on the work of Ted Harrison. So it was the child's own interpretation and their own ideas, but drawing on some of the techniques that Ted Harrison uses. And the drawings at the bottom, based on the children's own imaginations, they were challenged to create a piece of art with a new creature that had never been seen before. So as well as drawing on things that the children have experienced, we're also asking them to create pieces of art based on their imagination. Throughout all of these different explorations, we'll explore different genres. So here we've got examples of portraits and landscapes, which the children know can be created in lots of different ways, using paint, drawings, um, collage. And we're also exploring the difference between realistic art and abstract art. Lots of children throughout school will create most of their art independently, expressing their own ideas but will also create collaborative pieces around a shared idea. So here you can see an example of a collection of collages created by year one children, where they work together to decorate the beautiful stick, the beautiful branch from which the artwork hangs, but everybody has a chance to celebrate and express their own ideas and their own creativity through that piece. Here's just a few of Veg few examples of some of the enrichment opportunities so for instance last year all the children in year two participated in an online paper sculpture workshop working alongside an artist online all children in reception held their own art exhibition 12 pupils each half term experienced 1 to 12 tuition in art club um, in which we pursue projects linked to their own ideas and interests whilst developing their skills so we start the club by asking the children what kind of things they'd really like the opportunity to do. So currently, um, we've been sewing animals and the children have been designing their own toys. Each year we participate in external exhibitions, including the Sheffield Rotary Club, the Broomhill Exhibition and the Netheredge Festival. We have regular enterprise projects which allow the children to work collaboratively towards an end goal. We have annual Christmas craft workshops which allow the children to develop their skills alongside parent volunteers. And the HSA's annual Christmas card projects mean every child creates their own product for sale. At Hunter's Bar we ensure that all children access all learning. There are no barriers which we can't surmount. We use visual symbols so that children can access the learning readily, they don't, they're not inhibited by reading. We have sequencing script strips, so that if children forget instructions, for example, we can sequence them for them as keys to remind them, different processes and steps in their learning. 
we use real life objects that children can handle so that we're not taking for granted experiences or shared language. We use talking tins or whiteboards again to remind children of instructions that might be needed. We use adaptive tools such as alternative scissors or grips for pencils and brushes. We use examples so that children can see firsthand what, what we're referring to and what we mean. Talk partners enable children to talk through their ideas and support each other to recall prior learning. And we use pre-learning groups in which children have learning before the lesson begins so that they'll be introduced to things such as new vocabulary. I'm sure that you have got unlimited ways to support your children with art and DT at home. Here are just a few of the things that have sprung to my mind. And if nothing else, I want you to hear them and read them and think, ah, oh, yeah, we're doing this already, because I'm sure you are, based on what the children say and their enthusiasm for art. So the first one is just to embrace opportunities to create, to develop the children's skills such as pencil control, using scissors, holding a paintbrush and their ability to mould and sculpt such as using play-doh or salt dough that maybe they've made themselves. Drawing attention to art and the environment on a large scale such as visiting galleries or outdoor sculpture parks and on the small scale such as noticing differences in fabric, patterns in wrapping paper street art that you see on the way to school. Instill and model a growth mindset. So I remember when I was at school people would say things like, oh, I'm rubbish at art, I can't do that, it's not for me. Everyone can create art and everyone gets better with practice. And the idea of a growth mindset is that we all develop our skills the more we practice and that we can all grow and encourage and model comments on what's interesting about art rather than judging it as bad or good. Some children will say, oh, that's no good, or I don't like that, or oh, I wish I'd not done it like that. Instead, encourage your child to see what's interesting about what they have created and be proud of it. And just one more thing. If you have any links to local artists, crafters or designers, or maybe you are one such creative, and feel that we could develop links, please get in touch. Thanks for listening.